Okay. And then the other thing that we talked about that we didn't mention yet are the uh, the Boltzmann's. Yeah. Okay. So here, remember we said that here's the osteum going up and down with the central call, central opening, and then you have these Boltzmann's canals that go perpendicular to that. So when you have a blood vessel going in, it starts at the periosteum. Then it's going to go in somewhere through one of these Volkmann's canals. And then it can get inside of these central canals inside of the osteoid. And they can go through other Volkmann's canals to get eventually in all the way to the central canal. Right. So the blood vessels and the nerves can go up and down through the uh, central canals. Yeah, the traversing canals are the central canal. And then if they want to go crosswise, they're going to go through these Volkmann's canals. And then they could get into the spongy bone and go in between the trabecula. So that's basically just the same thing again, right? So in this case, we're not looking at the mid shaft of the lung bone. We're looking at maybe more up towards the distal or the proximal end where you have compact bone. And then right next to it, you can have some spongy bone. And then the units that we talked about for building compact bone is what? The osteons or the diversian systems. And then the things that build the spongy bone is trabecula. Okay. So now here is looking at it a little more <coughs> zoomed in level, where, what do we call these cells right here? Osteocytes. And then what's this? The layers are the lamellae, right? And then where's the little opening that the cell sits in? What's that called? The cuneate, right? And then you have these canalicula. I guess canalicula is singular and canalicula is or one way or the other, something like that. So now we're going to zoom in a little bit more. Or this is an actual, you know, this other one's a drawing, right? Here's the actual mic microscopic slide of, of bone. Right? So then, what's this whole unit here called? Osteon or the diversian system. And then in the middle, you have the central canal. And then what are the rings? Mm -hmm. Lamellae. And then in between, inside of the lamellae, you have the osteocyte that sits inside of the what? The cunei. And then all these little openings here, or passageways, are going to be the canaliculi. Canaliculi. OK? And then what's the other one that? You don't really see on here that the canaliculi can go, you have the central canal goes up and down, and then the canaliculi can go this way, but this was, that's the other one that goes. Well, that's right. That's the only thing I remember. <laughs> well, if you can remember one thing that we talked about now, and then you'll study it later, you remember one more, you study again, you remember another. Like I said, you're not going to expect to get everything from just this one time going through, right? I still have to look it up sometimes to make sure I know, I say it right, that it's the canaliculi and canaliculi. You can have all these words that text. Well, we'll go over and try to focus on what's the more, most important. Okay. okay, but this is the thing, all right? All this stuff in here, I'm not, not every single thing in here is going to be on the test that you need to take for this class. But are some of these things going to come up later that you need to know this stuff to understand other things? Yes. So try not to just go like this and look and say, okay, I'm only going to look at what I need to know for this test. Otherwise, because all the other stuff that we're talking about is what's going to lay the foundation for all the other classes that you talked about before. I mean, because when I study the anatomy and like study all the basic sciences stuff, you got to study it hard to get all this stuff. But the harder you do on 
more you focus on this stuff, it's going to set a better foundation for the stuff that's going to get easier later. Except for Earth. All bets are off on that. <laughs> that's different. You can't use your anatomy study to understand Earth unless you... Even if, even if you look at the microscopic structure, it still doesn't tell you if it calms the liver or nurtures the spleen chi or whatever that is. <laughs> That's a different cause. Okay, so again, now when we're talking about the chemical composition of bone. Uh, I guess I left out a Yeah, so we'll talk about the chem chemical composition of bone. And there's going to be two different major categories of it. There's going to be organic and inorganic. Just like when you study chemistry, right? Inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry. So inorganic is more just going to be minerals, things like that. Organic components are going to be things like cells. So luckily, most of these things, organic ones, we've already talked about, right? So osteoblasts. Right? Think of the word osteo means what? Bone. Blast is going to form it. Okay? So osteoblast is cells that form bones. Osteocytes are, the osteoblasts grow up to be osteocytes. So osteo is bone, cytes is cell. So osteocytes is going to be a bone cell. And then osteoclasts are things that are going to break down bone. So inside the bone, you need to have all three of these different cells, okay? Because you're going to need to build up bone, you're going to need to break down bone, and then you need to kind of maintain the structure of the bone itself. So you have these three different cells that are going to be important in bone to maintain it, and these are the organic types of things. Then the other thing is the specific osteoid, which is the mineralized bone matrix. So you have this matrix, that's mineralized, okay? Um, and we talk briefly about, you know, you have different kinds of connective tissue, okay? You can have, what's the connective tissue that's liquid? Blood. 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 Yeah. Okay. So blood is a connective tissue. Bone is a connective tissue. So bone is the one that has the osteoid matrix that gets mineralized. Blood is the one that stays liquid, then there's a bunch of other ones in between. Okay? You have dense, regular connective tissue, elastic connective tissue, things like that. Stuff that's more just fibers. Because you're going to have, talk about like tendons and ligaments. And those have different properties. They need to bend and stretch a little bit. Whereas bone needs, I mean, uh, blood needs to be liquid to flow. Bone needs to be mineralized to be hard. Those are the functions of bone, right? So you have osteoid, which is a, the unmineralized bone matrix. So osteoid is the part without the minerals, and then it's going to have the minerals laid down onto it. And that's going to be proteoglycans, glycoproteins, collagen. And so collagen is a protein that forms fibers. So this is the framework. The osteoid is the framework that gets laid down that's going to have the minerals added to it. So it's still organic. So the organic components are going to be the, osteo, the three different kinds of cells, osteoblast, clast, and cytes. And then you have the osteoid, which is the unmineralized bone matrix <coughs> that's going to be the framework for the minerals to be added onto. So now we're moving into inorganic. So we're going to talk about hydroxyapatites or mineral salts. So that's going to be a big portion of the bone, right? So 65% of the mass of bone is going to be these hydroxyapatites. And it's going to be mostly calcium phosphates, and that's what gives the bone its hardness and resistance to compression. So you have the osteoid, which is the framework that the, os that the minerals are laid onto. 